So in this video, we're going to cover uh, how to make a simple drawing in SolidWorks uh, from an existing part. So um, overall, we're going to touch on drawing views, um, altering those views to match what you like. Um, we're going to talk about creating dimensions uh, through two different ways and uh, adding tolerances as well. So to prepare for this activity, you should have um, drawing 8-7. Uh, you can see this is the, the right side view and the isometric view with all the uh, drawings if you need to create it. Um, but you're going to want this part ready made so that we can insert it in a drawing. So uh, the first few steps, excuse me, the first few steps to create um, drawings are uh, we're just going to open a new drawing file, um, select paper size, and then insert our model um, in that dialog to get uh, to begin the process. So what this looks like, you can see I already have my part that I want to create a drawing of open. I'm going to hit new, click drawing in my template list, hit OK, um, choose a paper size. Uh, I've selected here um, size A um, for landscapes. This is about letter size. Um, then I'm going to hit OK. And we can see that I have, in this list of open documents, drawing 8.7, or if I didn't have that open, I could click Browse. Now, so this is basically to get the base view, or the first model view, um, it wants to start with a part. So I'm just going to double click on drawing 8.7. We get this new dialog here. Um, and we'll notice that I have this box where if I enable a preview somewhere, uh, preview. Here we go. So this shows you what the view is going to look like. You can see if I choose a different base view, I get a, uh, a different, uh, basically I choose a different orientation, I get a different base view. Um, so I'm going to start with this view here. I'm going to place this. And then as soon as I place that base view, the mouse cursor determines where I want to place projected views to show the other two orientations. And you can see I can even do isometric views from here. So I'm just going to place a uh, top view and a front view. Once I've done those three, you can hit check, and that will accept each of these three view placements. So that brings us to up here. We've created the front and side views in addition to that base view. Um, so now we want to change the drawing scale um, to scale up these parts ever so slightly. So by default, it's about 1 to 5, which we can see uh, listed somewhere here. Scale 1 to 5. So if we want to change that, if you right-click on Sheet Format in under Drawing 8.7, under Properties, one of the choices is the scale and the name of the sheet. So we can just make that 1 to 4. You can see that will grow our parts slightly. And now if we want to reposition these a little bit to give us a little more space, you just hover the mouse around this border, and when you see that plus shape sign, um, that's what lets you um, move the view around. So we can see our final list, um, our final entry in the list here, is just to enable hidden lines. Um, and so that's for these views. We want to be able to um, see what's going on behind, you know, all these visible features. So um, for We'll take this view, for example, in display style over here, um, sort of in the middle of drawing view. We can just click hidden lines, and that enables hidden lines here. We can do the same um, for this view as well. And you can see that's uh, it's already changed. And the nice thing is um, we can see if parent style is checked, since these projected views come from this view, if we update this base view, these guys change as well. So now we're going to look at creating manual dimensions. Um, and this is just going to use the Smart Dimension tool, um, much like you would use in uh, the Sketcher. Uh, we're also going to look at creating center lines and eventually hole callouts um, so that you can really nicely mark up your drawing. So here in uh, Annotation, you'll notice Sketch and Annotation are two different things. Um, we're going to click Smart Dimension. And now I can start placing dimensions on the outside here. Um, and this, this scheme here, you can see these are gray, which means they're reference dimensions. So they're independent of whatever modeling scheme you chose um, to create these features in the first place. So um, for example, I could 
uh, click here and get myself some diameters. Um, and then, uh, as I'd mentioned before, we can add other markups as well. We can see, so we're lucky, for example, uh, these center marks are created by default, um, but we don't have center lines for these holes. So I can, if I choose the center line tool, click here and here, and then by clicking on the outline of each hole, it creates a center line that nicely fills um, the, the gap in that hole. So we can mark the center there, same here. Um, so you can very quickly do that markup. Okay, so when we're done, we hit check. And if we want to do something more complex than say this uh, diameter callout, I can do an actual, like a, a hole callout with all um, that'll have diameter and depth incorporated. And that's in the middle here. So we click hole callout um, and we'll choose a hole. Uh, see this guy. We can see that the way this one is defined, uh, we have a diameter and a depth. So at this point, you may have noticed that these units are a little strange in the way. That's because this, by default, um, goes to MKS, which is meters. And we want to be working in IPS. I'm also going to up the length to, uh, precision to 3, since these are inches. And now we've got our familiar dimensions in inches. So we can see you can create um, very nicely formatted hole callouts. You can create diameter dimensions, all the standard dimension shapes that you could want um, just with a few tools here. Furthermore, you can use tools like, for example, this area hatch. Um, so if you want to shade a surface, it, similar to AutoCAD, will fill a face um, uh, and not, it's not a sketched face, you'll notice. You see this actually fills in behind. It will fill um, one of the part faces with hatching. Um, so if you want to call out a particular face, you can change it to solid, you can change the pattern, all that stuff. Um, and then when you're done filling in, you can see that uh, like you can do multiple faces in one set of hatching. Um, and then you just hit check to accept that. I can undo that to get rid of it. So next we're going to look at creating section views. Um, and so this is a little more advanced than our basic views. Um, but it's surprisingly quick um, to draw in SolidWorks. So we're going to switch back here. Um, and to make this a little clearer, I'm going to get rid of those other dimensions that we did. Um, you can just click and delete them to get rid of them. Um, and so the easiest way, let's say I want to create a section view that looks like this bottom view here, this base view. but sliced in half so that we get this sort of offset section showing us each of these features. Um, so to do that, there's two steps. The first is I'm going to create a sketch or use a sketch feature. I'm going to click the line. Um, and then I'm going to use these snap tools here to start drawing an aligned uh, continuous sketch. And that is going to, I'm going to try and snap it to my lines here. Um, and that single sketch line will become our cut plane line. So I'll go back to view. I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to select the, the sketch line we just made. Um, click section view. And now we can see that that continuous line has become the cut plane. And if I want to flip the view orientation, uh, it's very easy. There's, uh, let's see, where is it? At the top, I can flip direction and change between uh, basically projecting downwards, you know, which side of the cut am I looking at? Um, and now you can see that the view is aligned, and so I can just place it down here. Um, and then if I want to get that view out of the way, now I can basically replace that view with this guy here. Now, you'll notice that this inherits its drawing style. Um, so if we click this view, we're going to want to make that uh, visible only to be a proper section view. And you can see that the hatching here matches up nicely. And so all, that, all the stuff that we were fussing over to do in AutoCAD um, now happens automatically here. So now we're going to look at how to import uh, model items and uh, sort of the pre-made dimensions that already come with your features. Um, and so it's a pretty simple step. Uh, we're just going to switch back here. 
And in annotation, instead of clicking smart dimension, we're going to click model items. So in model items, um, we can see uh, we can do either from a specific feature, we can import dimensions, or from the entire model. I'd recommend starting with the selected feature just to uh, keep the number of imports to a minimum so you can see the changes that are happening. And then by default, it just says uh, import dimensions that are marked for drawing. So for example, I can click on this guy, and now we can see that just from this boss, we have the center placement with re respect to these two features. Um, we have the diameter, and we can see these are dark, so these are the uh, actual dimensions that control this feature. Um, so now I can hit check, um, and I believe we can edit this directly if we wanted to. Um, and so now you can see I just changed the dimension here and updated the model and the hole actually shifted. So these dark dimensions here are actually associative with the part. Um, so this is very nice if you go back and uh, change the part dimensions, the drawing that you've made here will be updated as well. So um, I'm going to undo that, update the model. Just make sure this, this works. Okay, there we go. So we've imported some model dimensions, and you can keep doing that uh, for other features as well. So for example, this rib is half an inch thick. I can click um, the, this uh, boss feature. Um, when you're done, you always want to hit check to, to let you actually drag some of these around. Um, and it usually comes out a little bit messy, so you may have to, like you may not necessarily want to show all of these. Um, if, for example, you end up not wanting this dimension, all you have to do is just click on it, hit delete, um, and then you can manually go back and dimension yourself. So generally, um, there's no better method exactly. Um, there are advantages to both of these uh, using the manually placed reference dimensions versus uh, importing uh, the model dimensions. The difference kind of comes down to um, how separate you want the modeling and the dimensioning to be. So if you spent time making your model dimensions be very um, easy to understand and uh, and the basically something that would show up well in 2D, then you'll do well to import the part dimensions like we just did. If, on the other hand, you used a lot of uh, constraints or did a lot of patterning or um, references that won't, that won't make sense to directly read, then you'll probably want to do a more manual dimensioning scheme um, because you won't have to sort through the depths of features. You basically just draw the dimensions as you want. Finally, uh, one last note here. We'll note that uh, importing model dimensions can be really good for features that um, maybe have odd dimensions or multiple dimensions. Uh, so for example, anything, the hole wizard uh, creates uh, an entire callout for a hole, um, and you may want to preserve that callout rather than making a new one. So um, generally, even if you're doing a lot of manual dimensioning, you may want to consider using model dimensions if you're doing fillets, camfords, and hole wizard holes. So finally, I want to show you quickly, um, if you click on a particular dimension that needs to be toleranced, um, let's say the position of the center of this hole, um, all of these choices are directly available to you. Um, and by default, there's no tolerance. But you can switch to a variety of choices that will fit. So for example, basic is for um, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. You can do bilateral, um, which says from a base dimension have a deviation up and down. You can do symmetric, uh, which is a symmetrical uh, variation. In other words, you know, plus or minus some number. Um, we can do limits, which are uh, easy to specify, um, but are also a little bit, maybe a little bit less intuitive because you have uh, the, the actual limits of the dimensions. But it makes it very easy to vary from the base dimension because even though the, the limits are specified, on the drawing as the actual numbers, all you have to specify is the, the deviation from each dimension. So if I did plus two and minus one thousandth of an inch, we can see that right away this dimension has been, has that result. We've got a tolerance range of three thousandths, um, or plus two and minus one. And so it's very easy to manually create these tolerances 
um, in these drawings um, just like this. You can also, if you need to override dimension text, for example, let's say if I wanted to make this diameter um, be common. So this diameter, for example, appears in four places. Um, so in this dimension text box, I can just hit enter and start typing um, for places. And now, although this formatting is not as pretty as we might like, um, you can see we can very quickly add this dimension text here. Finally, a nice thing that you can do once you have all these drawings, um, or sorry, all these dimensions and uh, your views created, um, is that if you want to work with something like AutoCAD, you can do Save As, and besides the SolidWorks drawing formats, you can also do a bunch of export formats such as DXF, uh, DWG, Photoshop, etc. So for now, um, we're just going to choose the DWG drawing. Um, see, I've already created one here, so I'm just going to hit Save. And then if we flip over to AutoCAD and open up this drawing file, it'll complain um, that it's not made by AutoCAD. But we can see that otherwise, uh, the dimensions that we want appear. Um, we even get this nice table. Um, and so there, there are a few quirks. It's basically has saved us a ton of work, um, but you'll see that uh, things like these section lines don't appear as one single entity. So if you were hoping to edit this all at once, um, you would have to select all these guys and make them into a polyline. But other than that, um, and obviously the lack of layers here, um, this is pretty much a ready to go AutoCAD drawing. So this can save you a lot of effort if you have to produce AutoCAD formatted 2D drawings and you have access to SolidWorks. So anyway, happy drawing creation and best of luck with your projects.